This video is supported by Brilliant. Hey, what's up? Yeah, I figured that's what you were calling. Yeah, I know. I'm planning on going. I'll be there. Yeah, you gonna have a big turnout? Sweet. Need me to bring anything? You sure? I'll bring a bottle of wine. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, totally. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm looking forward to hanging out in a room full of people all breathing the same air without a hint of anxiety about it. Okay, all right, see ya. What is happening? Son of a... Temporal spatial bubbles acting up again. The what? There's been this temporal spatial bubble that's been floating around the house lately, and it just sometimes pops me into other points in time. Just ignore me. I'll be out in a minute. I'm, I'm sorry. The, the temp... What? Just pretend I'm not here. I'll bounce out in a second. I promise. Just go back to whatever, like, like what, what, what are you working on right now? It's a video on solid state batteries. Seriously? That's so crazy. I'm working on a follow up to that one right now. How weird is that? No, that, that video does really well. Oh yeah? Cool. So, um, so what, what year are you from? Uh, August, 2020. So, I mean, does anything interesting happen? <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying to get some work done right here, so if you don't mind. It's just kind of rude. Hey, you're the one that came into my dining room. Why don't you go to the coffee shop or something? <laughs> oh, oh. Mm. Yeah, that, that's that's not an option. How come? You could go, though. Why, why aren't you there? Well, I was going to. I just I didn't feel like putting on shoes. Oh, yeah, that's that's challenging. That, that's a good reason to not leave your house. Yeah. I'm grateful sack of shit. Dude, what's your problem, man? Why don't you just go work upstairs or something? Can't. Amy's on a video call. Video call? Why isn't she at work? She is at work. She quit teaching? Nope. Dude, what's happening? Oh my god. Yeah, you, you really want to know? You want me to tell you? Please. Fine. There's no way that I'll get through it before the bubble collapses, but fine. Um, <laughs> where do you even start? So, so... There was this market in Wuhan, China. Okay. I need more sleep. Is this underwear? A lot of things have changed over the last year. You've probably noticed a thing or two, but with the pace of change in technology, especially in battery technology, it's no surprise that one of the biggest questions I get asked is, what is the state of solid state batteries? <laughs> and I'm happy to say that the state of solid state batteries is solid. There are many companies trying to... Okay, all right, I know, yeah, it was funny, it was funny, but uh, if I'm gonna continue this video, you battery be quiet. Not so much with that one, okay. There have been some advancements with solid state batteries over the last year, and what with Tesla's battery day coming up soon, we hope. Uh, I thought it might be a good time to kind of take a look back and see what's happened with solid state batteries. How close are we to this revolution that we keep expecting? Yeah, I covered the basics of solid state batteries in last year's video, so I can just point you to that one if you want to get caught up. I also really seem to think that uh, we are around the verge of a revolution that was going to change the world. Oh, 2019, Joe. 
so young, so naive. So the main problem that solid state batteries seek to fix is the problem of dendrites. Now obviously there are other advantages like lighter weight and more energy dense, but it's the lifespan of solid state batteries that seem to get people most excited. And it's because it prevents dendrites. Dendrites are the little metal formations that tend to grow on the electrodes of lithium ion batteries. And these little battery stalactites are what form after repeated charging cycles, especially if you charge a little bit too fast. And this is why your laptops and your phones, that's why the, the battery level keeps kind of degrading over time. That and, you know, planned obsolescence, so you have to go buy a new one. So the solution, of course, is to get rid of the liquid electrolyte and get a solid electrolyte that won't let those dendrites form, hence solid state batteries. So there's a lot of people putting a lot of money into this technology and what with our devices taking over our lives and the internet of things becoming more of a thing, the technology of battery storage is gonna become more and more important. And as someone who talks a lot about electric cars, to the annoyance of some people, this is something that gets me really excited. So here's some of the most promising updates in the world of solid state batteries. And the first advancement worth noting is something called battery butter. Well, you think battery butter sounds weird? I've got almond milk in my fridge. Almonds don't have teats. I prefer cow's milk, but my body's not a fan. Anyway, the butter in question refers to the electrolyte, which is actually somewhere between a liquid and a solid. It's not quite solid, but it performs more like a liquid. I can't believe it's not liquid, you might say. It was whipped up as a combined effort by scientists at Chalmers University in Gothenburg, Sweden, and Jiotong University in China. And the results are pretty impressive. It can handle about 10 times the amount of energy that a standard electrolyte has to contend with. And the second, maybe bigger thing about this electrolyte is it's spreadable, which makes it more simple in the manufacturing process. And just like peanut butter is made by grinding up peanuts and a little bit of oil, battery butter is made by grinding up a ceramic electrolyte called LAGP and a little bit of ionic fluid, basically liquid salt. LAGP is what they call a nasicon compound, or a sodium superionic conductor. And they mix it through a process called melt quenching, which creates some post-crystallization on the nanoscale, which both gives it its texture, but also supercharges its conductive properties. See, it's like a butter sandwich, you know, anode on one side, battery butter in the middle, and then a cathode on the other side. You know, like the butter sandwiches your mom used to make? Is butter sandwich actually a thing? The only hang up is that in lab trials, it took a lot of pressure, like an extreme amount of pressure to make this work. And that might be a hindrance when it comes to mass production, but they are working on it. Bottom line is it might have 10 times the density of lithium ion batteries, but it might be three to seven years before it even starts to become mass produced. But in the meantime, I guess we'll just have to see what they churn out. Lots of puns in this video. All right, next up is Samsung. And on March 9th of this year, they published a paper where they declared that they had found a breakthrough in solid state battery technology. It was developed by the Samsung Advanced Institute of Technology and it was spearheaded by engineers Yuchi Ahara, Yong Gun Lee, and Dongmin Im. And in the paper, they claim that it can last for a thousand cycles with no degradation, gets 900 kilowatts per liter, and has a columbic efficiency of 99.8%. Columbic efficiency refers to how efficient it is at discharging the energy that it's stored. So it's made of a standard NMC cathode with a stainless steel anode and an aluminum collector. But of course the secret sauce is the solid electrolyte, which they call a sulfide solid electrolyte, or SSE, which goes by the evocative name of Li6PS5Ci. Sexy. But the smart thing that they do with this is they actually mix some of the cathode material into the electrode with something called LZO, or lithium zirconium oxides. This kind of pumps up the efficiency and increases the conductivity. And that stainless steel anode makes it so that the lithium ions actually lay a little bit more flat and smooth across the aluminum collector. So yeah, it makes it so that the ions lay flat. It's almost more like electroplating, like an electroplating technique. Whereas in a liquid electrolyte, what tends to happen is the lithium ions tend to sort of bunch up in specific spots and that's how the dendrites get formed. So that's pretty cool because you get to still use lithium, which holds a butt ton of energy. Now, another thing that helps to uh, reduce the amount of dendrite formation is a silver carbon layer right in the middle of the battery. What the silver does is it lowers the nucleation energy and that helps the lithium ions to bond a little bit more smoothly to the anode. It also lowers the possibility that you'll ever actually see this. Silver is expensive to say the least. And even though it's not a major component of the battery, when you do it over a mass scale, that adds up, it gets expensive. And it's not like a drastic improvement over current lithium ion batteries, like the 2170 cells that are in the Tesla Model 3, it gets about 680 kilowatts per liter. So, you know, a thousand is more. It's about 30, maybe 35% more, but are people gonna be willing to spend twice as much for that? I mean, it's, it's hard to say. 
But, you know, this is still an early technology and future iterations might start to lower or reduce the amount of silver and make it a little bit more palatable. MIT, aka the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, aka Geniusville, is also working on a new solid state technology that uses nanoparticles and, you guessed it, lithium. This concept is the brainchild of Professor Ju Lee, and by the way, you know you can trust him because he only has two syllables in his name. That's, that's how you know someone's smart, right? Two syllables. Ju Lee is a professor at the Battelle Energy Alliance, where he teaches nuclear science and engineering, and he's a professor of materials science and engineering as well. He's also a fellow of the Materials Research Society and the American Physical Society. So, you know, we're, we're basically the same person. Now lithium, for all of its energy storage goodness, does have one Achilles heel when it comes to solid state batteries, and that's the fact that it kind of expands and contracts as it charges and discharges. And this constant expanding and contracting in a space where it can't really move around can cause it to eventually fracture or detach from the battery completely. Now most efforts to overcome this problem have included mixing in materials that can have a stabilizing effect on the lithium, but Dr. Ju Lee and his team took a different approach. Their approach involves two additional classes of solids, a mixed ionic electronic conductors, or MIEC, and electron and lithium ion insulators, or ELI. The MIEC forms something of a honeycomb shape, an array of hexagonal tubes that kind of gives room for the lithium to expand and contract without destroying the overall structure of the battery. Like you can imagine a balloon inside of a pipe. It can expand and contract inside of the pipe, but it doesn't change the shape of the pipe. And the ELI works sort of like a binder between the MIEC walls and the solid electrolyte layer, which sort of prevents it from damaging the tubes. And so far things look pretty promising. In the lab anyway, they were able to put it through 100 cycles without seeing any cracking of the lithium metal layer. Which makes this the first actual functioning, non-reactive, solid metal, solid state battery. Focus on the word metal there, because most of these technologies involve some kind of ceramic or glass electrolyte. Lee and his team expect that this battery would be about 75% lighter than current lithium ion batteries, so say a Tesla Model S, which has a 1200 pound battery pack, it would only weigh 400 pounds with this technology. Not only lighter, but easier and cheaper to make, like 80% cheaper, mostly because it uses manganese, which is a very plentiful element. So we'll see how this comes along. It's still in the research phase, but it is a very promising development. But the question is, will it be good enough? <laughs> what? Whoa, yeah, what? Hey! That's right, it's time to talk about the man, the myth, the legend, John Goodenough, everybody. Yeah, the last video was basically just a big sloppy wet kiss on his 98-year-old mouth. It was indecent. Goodenough and his partner Maria Braga have been working on a, on a conductive glass electrolyte uh, solid state battery. Good enough, just to reiterate, was one of the people who developed a lithium ion battery back in the 70s and developed RAM. Seriously, legend. So the design that Goodenough and Braga have been working on is known as a sodium battery. Sodium, of course, is short for sodium ion conductive laminated polymer ceramic polymer solid state electrolyte. And they say science is unapproachable. And like the other ones on this list, this one is a bit of a sandwich. The future is gluten, people. But this sandwich has a negative electrode made out of a non-reactive polyethylene oxide, or PEO. And this creates a polymer matrix into which succinonitrile is added. This makes it more thermally stable, aka it doesn't get hot. And the positive electrode features another polymer matrix, this one known as polyacrylonitrile. And then sandwiched between those two is a NASACON type uh, ceramic electrolyte, kind of like what I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Now all these enhancements basically it comes down to a couple of things. It increases the conductivity and it prevents the dendrites from entering the electrolyte membrane. And that's kind of what we know right now. Details are still sparse, but it seems to be coming along pretty well. We'll keep an eye on that one. Now all these advancements are good news, obviously, but the big question is, of course, when are we going to see these in mass production? When are we going to see these in EVs? When is this going to change the world? Well, it's, it's going to be a while on that. There's a long, long road between success in a lab and success in the marketplace. I mean, keep in mind, again, lithium-ion batteries were first developed in a lab in the 70s, and it wasn't really until the 90s that we started actually seeing them in devices. And really, it's only been the last 15 years or so that it's really kind of taken over and changed things. Of course, the pace of change and the advancement is happening faster and faster now, but that same pace of change also applies to regular lithium-ion batteries like we're using right now, and it makes me wonder by the time these are actually in the market, will lithium ion batteries have advanced to the point that it kind of makes this redundant? I mean, there was just news last week of a new chemistry that gets 20% more energy out of a lithium ion battery, and Tesla's working on their dry electrode technology, which may or may not be revealed on battery day soon. 
It really might be the case that by the time solid state batteries really hit the market, lithium ion will be competing at almost exactly the same specs. So what can we really expect with solid state batteries? So we always put battery technology in terms of EVs, but we may be missing the bigger picture here. Because, you know, solid state batteries pack such a punch in such a small space, and we're seeing more and more things being connected all the way around us. There may be another whole use case for solid state batteries here. Like medical devices, for instance, you know, if you need something powered inside of your body, you probably want it to be in something that's not going to explode. This might make you an anti-dentrite. Things like heart rhythm monitors, neural stimulators, and other injectable technologies. And then there's the Internet of Things, which is supposed to grow to 41 billion connected devices by 2027. Have I mentioned something about an e-waste problem? But again, everything from cell phones to smartwatches, laptops, game controllers, Bluetooth headsets, the, the list goes on. These are all things that are going to be lighter, more powerful, and you might not need to recharge them for days. This might be where solid state really leaves its mark. And it might actually be in the near future. But going back to EVs for a second, I did mention briefly a second ago that Tesla has their upcoming battery day. Uh, right now it's scheduled for September 22nd. We don't really know what we're going to find out. But we can have fun speculating, can't we? Speculation time! So battery day has been postponed over and over again this year because apocalypse. But apparently it's going to be a really big deal because Elon really wants it to be a big event. That's why he kept postponing it so that people could actually show up for it. And in the Q1 earnings call, he said it would be, quote, one of the most exciting days in Tesla's history. We expect we'll finally see what their merger with Maxwell Technologies is going to bring about. Maxwell is known for their ultra capacitor technology, but the headline is probably going to be more about their dry electrode technology. Dry electrode batteries, it's thought, could increase energy density by a third, but more importantly, be really cheap and easy to make. This might not be a totally dry electrode battery. It might be a little bit of a hybrid with Tesla's original technology, but we'll see. But it really might be the production of these batteries that's going to be the big story. You know, Elon's been talking for a long time about building the machine that builds the machine, and this effort has been put under the mysterious name Project Roadrunner. The idea is to build a system that can build batteries at $100 per kilowatt, which it's generally agreed that would put it on parity with internal combustion engine cars. And this is why they purchased high bar systems was to streamline their production because basically all they do is inject electrolyte into batteries. That's like, that's like all they do is build pumps for that. So there's been a lot of evidence for Project Roadrunner in action. For example, the staff at Fremont uh, went from 115 to 400 people recently. And we're also expected to hear some updates about their production of lithium ion phosphate batteries in conjunction with CATL over in China. And the big deal about that is that they don't have any cobalt in them. And he's been teasing a million mile battery for a while now, so we might hear something about that. So there's a lot of speculation about what we'll see. People have been speculating for a while now, but whatever it is, uh, we will definitely cover it on the podcast I'm a part of. In case you don't know, somehow I'm on a podcast called Our Ludicrous Future with Tim Dodd, the everyday astronaut, and Ben Sullins, the everyday Tesla guy. Uh, but we do a podcast every single Friday, and that's where we cover kind of breaking news and batteries and technology and space and that kind of thing. I try to keep the videos on this channel to be a little bit more evergreen and not really chase news so much because I do that on the podcast. So if you're not following there, uh, I'll put a link down below. You should definitely go check that out because that's where we keep track of that stuff. I also want to point out a couple of good videos on solid state batteries that have been done by my friends Matt Farrell and the guys over at 2-Bit DaVinci. Um, they covered some stuff that I didn't quite get to here and they did a really good job. So share the love. Go check out those videos. I think I'll put them down below. Um, you'll get a little bit more information out of that. But let me know, what are you expecting from Battery Investor Day? Do you think that solid state batteries actually have something coming up around the corner? Do you think that the pace of innovation in lithium ion batteries might actually outshine solid state in the long run? Talk amongst yourselves in the comments. And by the way, if you've been watching this whole video with a little bit of confusion because battery technology is just a bit much, I get it. But one place you might want to go to uh, get caught up on that is the Electricity and Magnetism course on Brilliant. In this class, you'll learn the basics of the forces that power our lives, including whatever it is you're watching this on right now. Through 95 interactive exercises, you'll learn concepts like Coulomb's Law, which I mentioned earlier, two capacitance, Lorentz forces, electric fields, and much more. And once you've absorbed all that, you can move on to some other courses on Brilliant, like the classical physics courses, the quantum mechanics courses, applied science, computer algorithms, even competitive math. And the thing about Brilliant that's so brilliant is that it teaches you these things by solving problems. 
This wires your brain to think like a scientist and superpowers your problem solving abilities that can pay off in every area of your life. Plus you can do it on your mobile device and even offline so you can take it with you wherever you go. And they've got daily challenges so if you want a little bit of random brain nugget every day to just kind of keep you sharp, it's a great way to spend 10 minutes or so while you're procrastinating getting work done. And if you want a little taste of what I'm talking about here, they do have some uh, weekly brain teasers and puzzles that you can check out for free if you go to brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. And the first 200 people that sign up for the premium subscription that gives you access to all of their courses will get 20% off your subscription. So yeah, Brilliant's a lot of fun. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, I invite you to check it out. So brilliant.org slash answers with Joe. Link is down in the description. Big thanks to Brilliant for supporting this video and a huge shout out to the Answer Files on Patreon that are supporting this channel, making all of this possible and just being an awesome community and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's some new people that have joined. Let me murder the names real quick. We got BT Aiken, Stipulation, uh, Marcus Lurie, Julia Gregory, Rochelle Racine, Dr. Benjamin Coleman, Nick Charles, Joseph Mixon, Dustin, Danny Van Heck, Joe Carpenter, Jared, Mutas Hack, uh, Matthew Crabtree, Julian Gomez, and Joshua Simpson. Uh, thank you guys so much. If you would like to join them, get early access to videos, and just join an awesome community, you can go to patreon.com slash answerswithjoe. T-shirts available at the store at answerswithjoe.com slash store. There's also hoodies, mugs, stickers, other stuff. It supports the channel. It supports a designer in Prague that does a great job on these, and they're just, they're just fun to wear. So yeah, you can go to answerswithjoe.com slash store. Have fun. Please like and share this video if you liked it. And if this is your first time here, click on that. Google thinks you'll like it. Uh, there's others down on the side probably that have my face on them. And I invite you to go check those out. And if you do like them, um, maybe think about subscribing. I do come back with videos every Monday. All right, that's it for now. You guys go out there, have an eye-opening rest of the week. Stay safe, and I'll see you next Monday. Love you guys. Take care.